Hi everyone, I'm Professor Tawil. This semester I'm going to be teaching you paragraph writing. I would like you all please to buy this handbook in order to follow the videos uh, you will find on our faculty site. It is available at the photocopying center outside our faculty. When you leave our faculty and walk for about five meters on the right hand side, you'll find this small shop where you have this handbook, okay? Please have it. It contains all my lessons and also the exercises you will be doing at home as homeworks. Paragraph writing teaches you the skills to write narrative paragraphs, descriptive paragraphs, also comparison and contrast. It starts by the sentence because the sentence is the basis of all languages. Okay, the simple, the complex, etc. And then after practicing with the sentence, we start with the paragraphs. So today I will uh, start by the simple sentence, subject, predicate, etc. We'll be practicing a few exercises and I would like you to pay attention to my corrections and then copy them in the blank spaces you have in the handbook okay please look at the slides where you will have the lesson what do we mean by paragraph writing by paragraph writing, we refer to the student's ability to write paragraphs about different topics through the use of different writing methods. The process is a combination of content, the student's ideas and form structure also. Words, phrases, sentence structure, linking words, punctuation, etc. Thus, a nicely written paragraph must necessarily include not only clear and coherent ideas, but also a correct form and suitable writing method. A sentence. What is a sentence? You use groups of words to tell your thoughts or ideas many times every day. Some groups of words state a complete idea, while other groups of words may state only a part of an idea and, not, and do not give you a complete idea. All right, so follow with me to understand what is meant by this. Now look at these groups of words. German scientists have discovered an efficient medicine for cancer. Flamenco is a Spanish music. A sentence is a group of words that state, state a complete idea. Let's do this exercise together. Read each group of words and write a sentence if the group of words is a sentence, not a sentence if the group of words is not a sentence. The space station pins towards Mars. What do you think? Is it a sentence or not a sentence? This is a sentence. Some space engineers. Is this a sentence? No, it is not complete, so it is not a sentence. Chinese food is, is what? It is not complete, not a sentence. The Chinese invented the first rockets. This is a sentence. Some college students, so some college students did what? They played, they sang, they danced. It's not a sentence, it's not complete. Astronauts went to the spaceship in an elevator. This is a sentence. My students are waiting for the bus. This is again a sentence. A cat near my doorstep. It's not a sentence because it doesn't have a verb. The Pope. Well, again, this is not a sentence. A well-loved priest gives sermons on Sundays in this church. This is a sentence because it is complete. The French army. This is not a sentence. Something is missing. The other part of the sentence is missing. Titanic is a movie that won more than 10 Oscars. This is a sentence. 
So when sentences are complete, they are sentences. When something is missing, then they are not sentences. Please copy the answers. Now, types of sentences. We have many types of sentences. For exa example, a declarative sentence. A declarative sentence is the one that makes a statement or tells something, like, we spent our summer vacation in Paris. An interrogative sentence is the one that asks, asks a question, where are you from? So you have a question mark at the end. An exclamatory sentence is the one that shows a strong feeling or expresses emphasis. What a wonderful world! And then you have an exclamation mark. An imperative sentence is that the one that tells someone to do something. Write an essay on the following topics. This is imperative. Now let's do together this exercise. Write D for declarative sentences, INT for interrogative ones, IMP for imperative ones, and E for exclamatory ones. Did you arrive to your work on time yesterday? What do you think this sentence is? It is interrogative, because here we have a question. The best students are often granted excellent grades. This is just declarative. It gives information. I love your dress design. Yes, we have an exclamation mark, so it is exclamatory. Spell your names for me. This is Imperative. What do you mean exactly? Here we have a question, so it is interrogative. You look so elegant today. This is exclamatory. Where do you live now? What do you think this sentence is? It is interrogative. You have a question mark there. He is a well-known dentist. This is declarative. Oh gosh, I can't believe he did that. This is exclamatory. Write your answers on the answer sheet. This is imperative, an imperative sentence. To be or not to be, that is the question. Declarative. How dare you do that? It's a question here, so it is interrogative. Dieting is the only for you, uh, way for you to lose overweight. This is declarative. Which one is your car? Is it the blue one? This is interrogative. We have two questions here. This course is very difficult. Declarative. He is the biggest liar I have ever seen. This is, of course, exclamatory. I hope to meet you again soon. Declarative. Okay, so remember, we have declarative sentences, interrogative ones, imperative ones, and exclamatory ones. You are all the time guided by punctuation. Capitalizing and punctuating sentences. Use a capital letter to begin the first word of every sentence. Use a period at the end of a declarative or an imperative sentence. Use a question mark at the end of an interrogative sentence. Use an exclamation mark at the end of an exclamatory sentence. Let's back to wait correctly. Exercise 3. Write each sentence on the line following it. Using a capital letter at the beginning and a correct punctuation mark at the end. So, why are you standing there? We need a capitalized W, okay? Why are you standing there? So we continue the sentence and in the end, what do we have? We have a question mark. In your handbook, I want you to write the whole sentence. Here, I will write just the beginning and the rest of the punctuation. But for you there, in your handbooks, write the whole sentence. How impatient you are. Here we need an exclamation mark in the end. Exclamatory sentence. What do you want to cook in the oven? We need to capitalize W and then, because this is a question, in the end we need a question mark. The mail will be here soon. So we have capitalized T for the mail 
we write the sentence in the end we have just a full stop sit here and keep quiet so this is declarative capitalize s for sit then we write a sentence and finish with a full stop what a lovely day capitalize w we write all the sentence and then we finish with an exclamation mark are you sure this is the right dress ah the right address sorry are you sure this is the right address so r capitalize a you write the whole sentence and then question mark because this is a question he loves animals capital h he loves animals full stop this is incredible you are surprised somebody did something you can't believe or my god so exclamation mark would you like some more tea so here we have a question capitalize w for wood you write the whole sentence and then you finish with a question mark so punctuation is very is very very important when you start sentences use capital letters and you end your sentences with the right punctuation let's continue practicing with types of sentences imagine you are watching a football match write about it in the blank lines below declarative so you say today today barcelona team is really enthusiastic okay so this is declarative imperative you are imagine you are with your friend watching the football match so tell him give me the camera I'd like to take some photographs or some pictures or give me the car or just you say give me the camera okay to make it short sentence interrogative your friend is asking you do you want Uh, or he can say for instance uh, did you see did you see how that player is acting okay a question did you see how that player is acting or do you see how that player acted? Maybe he pushed another player or something. Did you see how that player acted? Exclamatory. You say, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. The whole thing is about imagination. The secret is of good writing is to have a lot of imagination. Declarative, you say, he is such a fast player. He is such a fast player. He moves very, very fast. Imperative, again, you can tell your friend, um, give me the bottle, the bottle of water, please. Interrogative. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Um, your friend would say, uh, if, he, if you ask him, are you hungry? He could say, for instance, I 
really cannot believe you're already hungry too. Yes, you. I cannot believe you're already hungry too. When you are watching a football match, you get thirsty and hungry, you eat chips, sandwiches, everything. Are you hungry? And of course, because you are hungry, you say, I cannot believe you're already hungry too. Declarative. So your friend would say, let us, it is time. Uh, or you can say, for instance, I have some chicken sandwiches. I have some chicken sandwiches with C. I have some chicken sandwiches. The imperative. Oh, great. Oh, great. You like san chicken sandwiches. Interrogative. Would you like an apple? Okay, so this is a an, a possible conversation between two people watching a football match. You can talk about many things, about food, the players, the camera, water, whatever. Please copy the answers. Now let's see the constituents of a sentence. All sentences have subject and predicate parts. The subject part of a sentence means who or what the sentence is about. For instance, my friend swam, swam at the beach. My friend swam at the beach. The dog is barking. So the subject can be a person, an object, an animal, etc. The predicate part of a sentence tells what action the subject part does. My friend swam at the beach. I ate a chicken sandwich. Let's move now to exercise five. Let's do it together. So show the subject part and the predicate part of the sentences you have here. Children played hide and seek. So the subject here is children. The predicate part is the rest. Played, hide and seek. Please, please copy the full sentence in your handbooks. Many tourists. This is the subject here. Many tourists. And the predicate is visit Pass Medina daily. Okay? The pretty girl collects seashells. So the subject is the pretty girl. The predicate is collects. Collects seashells. Then they are fond of flamenco music. The subject is they. The predicate is are fond of and you copy the whole sentence. It starts by the verb. His dog is calm and friendly. So the subject is his dog. The predicate is is calm and friendly. Sea explorers I, are puzzled by the undersea life. So sea explorers is the subject. And the predicate are puzzled by the underlie and the sea life. The flowers in my garden near need watering. The subject is the flowers. And the predicate is in my garden need watering. Then fame has positive and negative sides. The subject is fame and the predicate starts from has has positive and negative sides. The fields greenery. This is the subject. So the fields 
greenery. And the subject is, sorry, the predicate is captivating. The field's greenery is the subject and is captivating is the predicate. He is fond of Real Madrid football team. So he is the subject. The predicate starts by is, is fond of Real Madrid football team. So as you can see, the subject can be a person, an object, an animal. So children, many tourists, a pretty girl, they, his dog, sea explorers, the flowers, fame, the field greenery, and he. The other exercise now, here we have to complete these sentences. They have missing parts, okay? Imagine that you are at the seaside. Complete, complete each sentence below, either with a subject part or a predicate part. So here, is shining in the sky. The subject, you can say, the sun is shining in the sky. The sea, you can say, the sea is rough. The sea is rough. It's, not, it's the opposite of cal. So here, a gentle wind. We have the subject. We need the predicate. You can say, a gentle wind is blowing. Are building a castle. You can say, my brothers. As subject, my brothers are building a castle. And you can say, my sisters are playing rackets. Has buried his feet in the sand. So the subject could probably be your father. So my father has buried his feet in the sand. And now your mother, my mother, is watching a small boat in the distance. The boat is swaying on the waves because the sea is rough there are some waves and the boat is swaying on the waves what about all of you so you can see we feel so relaxed all the family is enjoying the seaside we feel so re so relaxed this romantic setting is extremely unique is wonderful is you can describe it the way you like so this romantic setting is extremely unique i have given you some possible answers you can find many others please copy the answers question seven or exercise seven imagine that you are at a restaurant find examples then illustrate their subject and predicate part so imagine you are Mm, for instance, uh, watching people in the restaurant and you can describe anything, the waiter, the menu, the tables. You can say, uh, I love this restaurant. Okay, so I love this restaurant. love this restaurant the subject is I and then the predicate is love this restaurant please copy the whole sentence this table is let's make it a question don't you see or you can say uh, do you like we can sit at the window table yes this is a good idea we can sit at the window table okay so the subject is we and then the predicate starts by can can sit at the window table and then you tell your friend the waiter the waiter is coming the waiter is coming so the subject here is the waiter and the predicate part is is coming
Um, you can say, for example, we'll, we will try. Uh, Spanish food. So you can say the subject is we and the predicate is will try Spanish food. I would like a, an orange I would like an orange juice two please I would like an orange I would like an orange juice too please so the subject here is I and the predicate everything starting by would would like an orange juice please then your friend would tell you uh, the place is getting crowded maybe it's a famous restaurant and so many people are coming to eat the place is getting crowded so what is the subject here the subject is the place the place and the predicate is getting crowded then you can say for example um, we can try a, a, a piece of cake or let's say we can try a chocolate cake we can try a chocolate cake because they have some desserts in restaurants you can choose uh, an apple cake they usually give you a piece we can try a chocolate cake so the subject is we and the predicate can try a chocolate cake. You have eaten too much, you say to your friend, I feel so full, because you have eaten so much. And the subject is I, and the predicate is feel so full. Then, your friend says, uh, I will ask for the bill. You will ask for the bill to pay and leave the restaurant. So the subject is I, the predicate is will ask for the bill. Time. Uh, let's say, uh, I think it is time to go. Okay, so after you pay, you, s you stay there for a while and then you say to your friend, I think it is time to go. So the subject is I and then the predicate think it is time to go. So this is how we do the exercise, okay? So you find sentences and then you show the subject part and then the predicate part. In this exercise again, we have sentences that are not complete, like the previous one. Uh, we have to make them sentences. They are not sentences, we have to make them sentences. Open the door. So you can say, my neighbor, my neighbor opened the the door for me the road we say the road is dangerous in this rainy night the road is dangerous in this rainy night night we're contemplating the beautiful paintings you can say the visitors of the gallery the visitors were contemplating the beautiful painting my dog so suppose you he heard something and he is barking so you say my dog is barking 
So every sentence here needs a part, either a subject or a predicate. Is enough for all of us. You can say this meal, this food is enough for all of us. The flowers need watering. They are getting a bit dry, so they need watering. Lying on the table. What was lying on the table? The cat was lying on the table. The noise, the noise is annoying. Suppose you are hearing a noise which is unbearable. You say the noise is annoying. So who, who is the person that breaks into houses? The thief or the burglar. The thief broke into the house uh, houses through the broken window the thief broke into the house through the the broken window telepathy what is telepathy telepathy is a mutual feeling between between two persons so it is a mutual feeling between two persons is a person who likes climbing so you say a mountaineer a mountaineer is a person who likes climbing mountains Shakespeare Shakespeare is an English writer his full name is William Shakespeare okay so we have made these sentences that were not sentences into sentences that have predicates and subjects now let's find some examples of declarative sentences, imperative ones, interrogative and exclamatory. Declarative, so you say, I am a student. This is declarative. Uh, we live in Casablanca. This is declarative. I love music. He is a good player, football player or baseball player. Imperative. Open the window. Open the window. Open the window. Read the sentences, then correct, then correct the punctuation mistakes. Okay, read the sentences, then correct the punctuation mistakes. Uh, another give me the phone you can say please to be more polite give me the phone please pay my electricity pay my electricity bill Please. Okay, so these are imperative. Now, interrogatives are the ones where you ask questions. How old are you? How old are you? And we need a question mark. Is this your car? Is this your car? Question mark. Are you? Traveling by car. Are you traveling by car? Another one. Are you traveling by car? Is your your house? Is your house in that neighborhood? Is your house in that neighborhood? Do you live in that neighborhood? Now exclamatory ones. 
I can't believe it. I can't believe it. You are surprised something happened and you can't believe it. I can't believe it. What a lovely dress. What a lovely dress. This painting is awesome. This painting is awesome. Something really nice. What a beautiful, what a beautiful lady. She is such a beautiful lady. Okay? So we have here examples of declarative sentences, imperative ones, interrogative, and exclamatory. So again, let's practice with sentences which are not complete. And then we have to correct them. Is blazing from top to bottom. So you can say, for imagine that there is a fire in the building. So you can say... Or you can say the fire, uh, yeah, better you say the building is blazing from top to bottom because of the fire. The teacher, we need the predicate, is explaining, are analyzing the themes of his recently published poetry collection. You can say critics. Critics are analyzing the themes of his poetry collection. My dog is so nervous. My dog is so nervous. Is enough for all of us. You say, this pizza is enough for all of us. Here, the beginning, capital T. A romantic dinner will be a good idea. A romantic dinner will be a good idea are not fully completed so you say these sentences are not fully completed the man with sportswear standing over there is looking at us broke my new crystal flower vase you can say my brother my brother broke my crystal flower vase. Cancer is a dangerous disease. Cancer is a dangerous disease. But it can be cured nowadays thanks to the progress in science. Is the one who likes having and helping friends. So you say a friendly person is the one who likes having and helping friends. Elizabeth II is the Queen of Great Britain. So Elizabeth II is the Queen of Great Britain. Tolerance means accepting others' differences. Okay? Tolerance means accepting others' differences. Is what we call religious dialogue. So, tolerance can also be called religious dialogue sometimes. Pope Francis, who is Pope Francis? Pope Francis is the head of the Vatican. He is the head of the Vatican in Italy. Okay, so this is all for today. We have started the sentence and we'll practice more with sentences we'll move to types of sentences like the simple the compound etc i want you to understand the sentence the basis of english language before we move to the paragraph 
So what you need to do for the time being is to get the handbook. All of you, I want you to buy this handbook, which is available at the photocopying center outside our faculty. Just walk a bit on the right hand side for about 30 meters and you will find it there. You must have it because as you can see, we're going to be practicing. There are so many exercises to do, so many paragraphs to write. You cannot work on separate handouts. It's better to have an organized work. Please have it, have it and follow my videos on the faculty site for the corrections. I am pleased to have you as my students and I, I hope you will learn a lot from my module. Thank you and uh, I'll see you next time.